Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Liam once again from Everything NYJ on Twitter. And for the third week in a row, we got blown out. We look incompetent, uncoached, unprepared. We look like we just don't care out there, guys. Obviously, yesterday we lost to the Colts 36-7. to And Sam didn't look good. Sam looked like he's regressing. He possibly had the worst game of his season yesterday. He only had 168 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions for a rating of only 47. Compared to the previous week, he had a rating of 90.5. So, I don't know, man. It's just not looking good. We can't get anything going. Gaze isn't helping Sam. Sam isn't competing very well. Let's get into the game a little bit, though. We came out pretty strong. You know, we were moving the ball downfield. We had a couple good first downs, a couple runs. And then... Uh, Xavier Rhodes had an early pick six and man coverage. The ball was designed for Lawrence Cager in a comeback route, and it obviously turned into a pick six early in the game. And right then and there, I knew that, you know, it was going to be a long day. I will say I, I had some hope after that, though. Sam looked pretty good early in the first quarter. Even in the first half, he didn't look too bad. Um, the drive after the interception, you know, we did respond. Sam rolled out. He took a lot of good scrambles. Um, he took a hard hit rushing for a first down. Took a hard hit to the head. So I will say that Sam was giving his best effort out there, guys. Caitlin Blage, he made a couple good catches. He had one first down. He was used more as a, like, a wide receiver. He only had five receptions for eight yards. And the role that he was in yesterday is what I think that Le'Veon Bell is going to be in. Used more as like a wide receiver than a running back. Um, Braxton Berrios had a good game. He caught the only touchdown of the game. He had an amazing play. Obviously, it was a very nice scramble once again by Sam with about five minutes left in the game. Berrios had four receptions, 64 yards, one touchdown, and he was averaging about 16 yards per carry, which I can't complain about. We can't complain about that, guys. You can't ask for anything more for a backup running uh, wide receiver. Excuse me. Philip Rivers in the game early in the second through his 400th touchdown pass, so congratulations to him. Of course, it had to happen against the Jets. What else is new? Um, Lawrence Cager did get a couple more plays during the game. He had one first down, two receptions for 35 yards. I will like to see a little bit more of him moving forward. I know he's only on the practice squad, but, you know, we're decimated by injuries at the wide receiver position. He was obviously a big highlight of training camp, so I would like to see him get, you know, a few more carries, a few more, you know, catches per game. Get him involved, man. Uh, the offensive line didn't play well. Sam still has no protection. They haven't gelled. Sam's still running for his life. Makai Becton went out early with a uh, shoulder injury. We don't know how severe that is yet. Hopefully it's nothing too crazy. I don't think he's going to play Thursday night, but I do think that, you know, hopefully he'll be back in a couple weeks if it's nothing too serious. We can't afford to lose him, guys. He's played so well. You know, he's been one of the stars of the team so far, especially on offense. Um... Later in the game, Sam threw another interception in the end zone to Xavier Rhodes. Late in the second, Sam overthrew a pass to Hogan, who is double covered, double covered. And that's the thing about Sam, you know, we need to start seeing more consistency from him. I understand maybe your wide receivers aren't, you know, really getting open, but throw it away if it's not there. You know, it's better than throwing all these interceptions and everything, but that's not helping him at all. That's more or less throwing his, you know, throwing him under the bus. It's more or less just hurting him, breaking his confidence even more than it is. If the play's not there, throw it away. Or if you throw it to a guy and he drops it, that's not on Sam, man. That's on the receiver for not catching it. You know, I wouldn't really mind a field goal coming out, you know, late in the second, coming down at halftime. We were getting the ball downfield. If Hogan would have caught that pass, that would have put us in field goal range. That would have been 10 to 17 going in a half. We would have definitely still been in the game. But, uh... You know, coming out, Ryan Griffin dropped an easy pass for a first down. At the end of the third quarter, Sam threw an, uh, another pick six to TJ Carey. And that was really it for Sam. You know, he was broken by this point, man. It sucks. It really, it's hard to see him, man. And uh, offense didn't really, you know, during that play, offense didn't really look like they were trying to stop him. You know, besides Sam, offense was really looking like they were giving up. They don't care, man. They're just out there collecting a paycheck. Late in the fourth, you know, we gave up a safety. But uh, I will say that uh, Kaylin Balaj had a run on second and 17. That got called back. And then Gaze calls a screen pass to Balaj on third and uh, 23, man. 
He tried to hurdle and got nowhere with it. And that's the bad play calling that we're talking about, you know. Screen passes and dives. That's all Gaze does, man. That's really all his playbook really is, man. Um, the Colts actually benched Phillip Rivers. Well, they didn't bench him. They pulled him. And we were getting blown out by their second string guys, man. Similar to last week with the 49ers, you know. We're not even being competitive with second stringers. We're getting blown out every week. And it's, you know, not even it's not even acceptable by the starters. But it's just that much more insulting to injury when it's the second string guys. Um, the Colts kicked the field goal to wrap up the game. That we got blown out 36-7. to Let's get into defense a little bit, you know. They didn't look like they were playing well at all. They were playing like 5 to 10 yards away from, you know, all the receivers and everybody else. They were missing tackles. They were arm tackling. Nobody looked like they cared, man, but there was no accountability. You know, Desir looks horrible, too. He, I think he's really, you know, Tremaine Johnson 2.0. Screw Tremaine. Screw Desir. Screw them all, man. They didn't play well. There's no accountability on that team. Nobody is fearing for their job. Nobody is worrying about, you know, hey, you know, if I'm not playing well, I'm not going to play next week. Or I'm going to get benched. There's no accountability. Nobody cares, man. It's the same old thing. We're going to go out there, not care. It is what it is. It's obvious that they haven't bought into Adam Gaze, and it looks like Greg Williams isn't coaching well at all. Maybe they're not buying into him. I don't really know what the situation is, but things need to change, man. We're going uh, to play Thursday against an 0-3 Broncos, and... We'll see what happens more, man. Tune in Wednesday for the Everything NYJ podcast. I will be breaking down, you know, more Adam Gaze, more Sam Darnold, what the future of the Jets is going to look like. There's a lot of news with the Jets. So uh, please go give me a follow on Everything NYJ. I greatly appreciate it. Send in your fan questions. Just tweet them to me, and I will be glad to answer them during the show on Wednesday. I really want to start doing some fan questions, so definitely get those in. And as always, man, I guess, go Jets.